This is one of multiple videos demonstrating how to troubleshoot issues in preparation for the CCNA exam. In this example, we've been told that PC1 is not able to ping PC2. So let's verify that. Can PC1 ping PC2? Notice the U and the dot telling us that it's unreachable. U means that the traffic is being sent to a router and the router doesn't know where to forward the traffic. Let's have a look at the routing table on this router acting as our PC. Notice in the output we have a default gateway configured. So can the PC ping the default gateway? Yes, it can. So PC1 is able to ping router one. In this topology, I'm using Cisco IOS V routers in GNS3. So rather than trying to set up a physical PC, I'm simply using Cisco IOS V images to act as our PCs. So on router one, let's have a look, show IP route. No routes are being learnt through a routing protocol. We only see local and connected routes on the router. Show IP protocols. OSPF has been enabled as a routing protocol on router one. A routing protocol would be required to allow router one to route traffic to this remote network. So router two would have to inform router one about that network using a routing protocol of some description. And in this example, it's OSPF. On router two, show IP protocols. OSPF is enabled on this router, show IP route. It's not learning any routes, however, from router one either. So looking at this output, are you able to see the problem? This output should allow you to see where the problem is in this network. So have you spotted the issue? Router one has this router ID, router two, has this router ID. The router IDs are the same on both routers. In OSPF, router IDs have to be unique. So show run pipe section OSPF. In the output, we can see that the router ID has been configured to 1.1.1.1. Show run pipe section OSPF. The same thing has been configured on router two. So, on router two, let's configure the router ID as quadruple two. Notice we're not getting any output when we make changes. And that's because I disabled logging to the console. So let me enable logging and enable logging this side. Let's see if we get any output. So show IP OSPF neighbor rather. Neighbor relationship has been established. On this side, show IP OSPF neighbor. Neighbor relationship has been established. So what I'll do just to show you the problem is I'll set it back to router ID of one. And notice we're told that we need to clear the OSPF process. So clear IP OSPF one process. Notice the neighbor relationship has gone down and notice we've been told that there's a duplicate router ID and we see that on both sides. So I purposely disabled logging to the console so that you wouldn't see that. So before I fix it, this is what the configuration looks like at the moment. Router ID is set to 1.1.1.1. So what we should do is change that to quadruple two. In this case, we didn't have to reset the process because the neighbor relationship hadn't been established yet. Notice now the relationship has gone to full. So we changed the configuration from this to this. Only difference is router ID has been changed. Show IP OSPF neighbor. Neighbor relationship is established. On this side, neighbor relationship has been established. 
If you see output like this, it makes it easy to find where the problem is. You may not have it that easy. In the exam as an example, you may have to discover where the problem is like I've done here. So can PC1 ping PC2? Yes, it can. Let's trace to PC2. Notice the trace succeeds. So we've successfully fixed the issue in this network. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please add comments below and let me know if you found this helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.